So, um, I'd like to know, how did you have a mentor? Did you have some kind of support system that you could go to when you hit a snag and you did not know how to invoice a client, you don't know how to charge them, like the literal basics of running a business. Because what I found for me right now, the interior design industry is so gutted. It's ridiculous, actually, because there's a, you know, there's a big enough pie for everyone to share. But someone as small like me, no name brand, approaching someone, you know, Nothing major, some kind of a quick chat advice. It's like, whoo, no, sissy, how does that work? <laughs> so how did you cope with such moments? Because personally, let me be honest with you, I, I wing it as I go. I Google a lot. I read a lot. It's ridiculous the number of books that I have because I'm like, this is the one thing that I enjoy. I feel like this is where I'm out of my out of my head. It's fine for me. It doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a job or a business. So I want to make it work. It has to work at some point. I'm not even worried about making it big today or tomorrow. At some point, it will get to where I want it to be. But for now, whew, the day-to-day -day challenges, flames, <laughs> flames. Um. Okay, so I'm, I'm quite a hard-headed person in a way that it's very hard for me to ask for help. So that I know about myself. So when I started my business, I made sure I was super ready. So by saying super ready, so you in um, TV right now. So it's very hard for a lot of people, especially in an industry where it's very competitive and saturated for someone to willingly take you in and show you the ropes. Very difficult, uh, especially in the creative industry. Um, and, you know, a lot of people ask for mentorship or shadowing, but as you say, you're winging it. Now, when someone from the outside sees a business and they think it's successful, um, the reason I don't take in mentorship or shadowing, it's because I'm thinking, I'm also still learning. There's days where I'm not perfect, there's days where I could, I'm not sure what I'm doing. So now to bring someone in into your space and you, you don't wanna disappoint them in what the expectations are. So that's my reason for making sure that I don't actually disappoint someone. And the answer for that is my master classes that I do. Because for me, it's still very daunting to have someone rely so much on you for knowledge, right? For them to get it right in their business. My advice is try and see if it's possible for you to, even if it's interning, save money, right? Go intern for an interior deco company. That you can be in it, learn. Because now you, you, you're an employee. You, you learn so much by just being there and accessing what the day-to-day -day runnings of the industry or the business that you want to get into, rather than going to someone and asking them for help. Because if it's a competitive industry, you are competition, potentially. So it's not easy for someone to do it that way. So for me, I think I'm not going to say I knew exactly what I was doing, but I went in knowing I'm ready. I had the experience of dealing with agencies that it was easy for me to know how much I actually want to charge because I've learned the ropes by being an employee, by working for someone, having those years, managing a team, being responsible for big events. So I made sure I was in the right space, all the jobs I was applying for to take me to a point where when I started my business, it was related to that. So I think the challenge is when you're doing something that's not related to your side hustle. Because now, the time you take to research takes you even longer because now you have other obligations. And now, the side hustle that you're really passionate about takes a bit of a, you know? Yeah. So you need, you need to decide if you really want to make the interior decor, you know, business 
successful, you need to be in it. So even if you, you, you help out someone on a part-time basis, so there's people that it's freelancers, try that route rather than asking for mentorship. It's, it's harder for someone to say, I don't have time, I, I don't have any mentorship programs at the moment. It's easier for other industries, a lot easier when it's, but in the service industry, it's very hard because it's, there's days where you're in it and now imagine you have someone in your space and it's, a, it's you're not busy. If it's a seasonal industry like that, it's very difficult. So the best way is maybe try and find a company that you really look up to and see if they're looking for freelancers and that's your way in. You're exposed to the business side of it because if the passion is there and you reading a lot, making sure you're acquiring all the skills and researching, that's, that's a very good step. But now you want to know in terms of charging and all of that, the ins and outs of actually running a business. You need to be in it to... Someone can't give you the recipe like that and tell you how to do it.